With only 86 left in the world, our kākāpō still teeter on the brink of extinction. But over the last 30 years, a remarkable battle has been waged, and the blood, sweat and tears that have gone into this unique and beautiful species means that slowly but surely, our kākāpō are being brought back from the brink. In 1974, at that time we didn't really know of the existence of any birds, so my first priority was to try and find something, particularly females, because there hadn't been any females seen for a long, long time. Well, over the years 1974 uh, to 78, we found something like 18 birds in Fiordland. All of them were um, males, no females at all we didn't find. Um, and it looked as though the kākāpō was technically extinct. But fortunately, in 1977, we were able to do a trip to Stewart Island and we found kākāpō there, including females. The first female was not actually seen until uh, 1980. And then, and only then at that stage, did it become feasible to save them. In an amazing uh, feat, we managed to round up all the kākāpō over a uh, about 10,000 hectares of um, scrubland, very, very dense scrubland, some of it, catch them and move them to Little Barrier and to uh, Codfish or Whenuaho Island and thereby um, destroy the last remaining population of Kākāpō. But in so doing, we actually saved them from certain extinction because had we not moved them, the cats would have done, done the job for us and cleaned them out completely. And so far as we know, there's no, no Kākāpō left on Stewart Island, very sad. And in fact, they've gone from throughout their natural range now. The uh, total population, so far as we're aware, got down to uh, 52 birds in 94 and 95. There were three things that we did that made a dramatic improvement in the survival of chicks. One was to ensure that the eggs weren't eaten by rats. The second one was to um, train the females to take supplementary food because um, what was happening repeatedly on the islands where they are, the rimu fruit would um, abort just before it ripened, just as the chicks were hatching, and uh, the females would, st would not have the food to feed their chicks, and the chicks would starve. And the third thing was to monitor. We had to know exactly what's going on in, the, in every nest, and if there's a problem, to do something about it. So this is Nora's house. This is where Nora lives and feeds. Yeah. And um, as well as feeding her nuts at the moment. We're also feeding her uh, rimu, rimu trees. Yeah. That's her normal diet over summer is rimu. And so we've got another one of these um, fantastic snarks here. Yeah. And it's attached to a set of auto scales. She'll stand up here and she'll eat her nuts and every minute it will take a weight off her. Yeah. And that tells us whether or not we should be feeding her more or less. And so you're just fine tuning your science all the time, aren't you? Yeah, I think that we've got as far as we can go with the actual physical management of the birds, so it's now the science that's taking over. We've got artificial insemination and developing a new diet. We've got someone working on a new diet at Massey University doing their thesis on that, so we're just trying to get something that replicates the same qualities as Rimu fruit. Whenuaho or Codfish Island is one of our most closely guarded islands and only a handful of people ever get the chance to explore this remote and fascinating place. For the Kākāpō team, it's just another tough day at the office as they continue to try and pull out all the stops to protect our beautiful Kākāpō. Hey boy.